Hey friends, welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. And I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you joined us for this conversation. Let's dive in. Katie Couric is an award-winning journalist and number one New York Times bestselling author of her memoir, Going There, which was published in October 2021. She is also a co-founder of Stand Up to Cancer, SU2C, which has raised more than $700 million for cancer research. Couric was the first woman to solo anchor a network evening newscast, serving as anchor and managing editor of the CBS Evening News from 2006 to 2011, following 15 years as co-anchor of NBC's Today Show. In 2017, she founded Katie Couric Media, KCM, which has developed a number of media projects, including a daily newsletter, Wake Up Call, a podcast, Next Question, digital video series, and several documentaries. You can find it all at katiecouric.com. Through a mutual friend, Katie reached out to me after the Covenant School shooting and asked me to be on an Instagram Live with her, which, of course, in the midst of the heartbreak over what was going on in our community, I was a nervous wreck to talk to Katie Couric, as anyone would be. And I will never forget her texting me saying, can we talk on the phone and hopping on the phone and her saying, hey, sissy, my name is Katie Couric. (laughs) And I didn't know what to say other than you do not need to introduce yourself to me. So We have a feeling she doesn't need an introduction with you either, but we're so excited for you to listen in on this conversation. Katie, we are so delighted to have you on the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. You have been one of the people we would have wanted the most. And we are so, I am delighted to be with you both. You are awesome. And we were talking about one of the most beloved and trusted voices that I remember in my lifetime. And David, Aww, you said the same. You are so I sweet. Know. I don't know if well, people still think that. I hope so. <laughs> I'm trying to do good work. But in this very divided country of ours, it's it's yes. very hard to be trusted by a lot of people. And uh, it's a very complicated time in our country. So I appreciate you all saying that. Oh, it is complicated. But you bring so much grace and warmth and stability, I think, to the conversation. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, you were so nice to me, Sissy, when that tragedy in Nashville happened. And I so appreciated your sensitivity Mm -hmm. and compassion at that terrible time. So this was the least I could do. You're Mm -hmm. so kind. Well, I was grateful to get to talk with you on that day and just that you were, again, being a voice of such grace and information, helpful information in that time, as always. Yeah. Yeah. And grateful we get to talk with you today as well. And Katie, we love to start by just hearing more about your story, your family, and how you found your way to the amazing work you're doing in this world. Well, I love to talk about my family (laughs) uh, because I, I had a wonderful, loving, almost leave it to beaver childhood. I grew up in Arlington, Virginia. I was the youngest of four kids. Um, And I think I have a lot of the personality traits of the youngest child. I was just thinking (laughs) that so much of your delight and warmth makes so much sense. And I was sort of the, you know, class, I wouldn't say the class clown, but I was, you know, I got a lot of attention growing up, which I think is good and bad. And my parents were wonderful parents. My dad, uh, I just thought the world of him. He was incredibly smart, erudite, and well-read, and um, a real Southern gentleman. He grew up in Dublin, Georgia, and was a newspaper man, went to Mercer. Uh, He wrote for the Mercer Telegraph. He was the editor-in-chief of his newspaper in college. I think it was called the Mercer Cluster. Went to work for the Mercer, uh, the Macon Telegraph, sorry. Then went to the Atlanta Constitution, then went to United Press, then moved to to the D.C. area where he was also at at United Press. And then ultimately went into public relations. Um, I think 
he was a fine journalist, and uh, I think he infused me with the desire to be a journalist and to write. And my mom was an incredible person, too, very loving, grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, but her roots are in the South as well. Southern Jews from Alabama originally, and then Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I just, my mom was fun and encouraging and our cheerleader and just loved being a mom. I think she grew up in a time where women didn't really have career aspirations. I always said she would have been a great stockbroker because she bought a lot of Trojan stock when the AIDS epidemic started in the 80s. And wow. she was she was very savvy. She was a good artist, really quite artistic. And um, I just feel incredibly blessed that I have never experienced or never experienced anything but unconditional love from my parents. I think they got a kick out of me uh, as the youngest kid, but they loved all their kids equally. They lost my sister, Emily, when she was 54, which was just Mm -hmm. crushing for them. Their first born daughter, Emily. My sister was running for Lieutenant Governor of Virginia with Mark Warner. Wow. And everyone said that she would be the first female governor of, of Virginia. And that never happened because she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and had to drop out of the race. And Tim Kaine, interestingly enough, replaced Emily. But um, and my sister Kiki is Clara, but I call her Kiki. She's a landscape architect in Boston. My brother Johnny uh, is the CFO of a company in the Washington, D.C. area and the, probably the nicest of all the current kids. And <laughs> I just had an idyllic childhood and, you know, I miss my parents terribly, but as Mm -hmm. my minister said, those who love deeply grieve deeply. And that always turns me from feeling grief stricken to feeling grateful. And, Mm. um, yeah. And, you know, I just, I had a really happy childhood and I feel, as I said, lucky when people have a lot of trauma and, or don't feel close to their parents, I always feel so sad because Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously the kind of love you have from your parents gives you the foundation for a happy life. And, Mm -hmm. and I certainly have that. Yes. Yeah. Changes so much of who forms so much of who we are. Definitely. You know, someone was talking about Elon Musk the other day and I was like, he is a, a living example of what happens when you are you know, you have an abusive father. Mm. I mean, his father, these, you know, I think you, you don't always realize that children are like Play-Doh and you have this ability to really shape them and to give them a foundation and to, you know, give them those proverbial roots and wings. And it's such a responsibility, but it, it just has, as you know, and I'm sure you all talk about this trauma or feeling unloved can have lifelong ramifications. So I think the more I've learned about that, the more I, you know, appreciated the childhood I had. Yes, yes. You you know, we all share a love for Kelly Corrigan. I know you've had a lot of conversations with her. And she, she said something that we quote often in parenting seminars where she said, I can't ever remember that the way she framed the sentence, but it was something like, my dad made me feel smart, creative, and beautiful. I don't remember exactly. And that has become the job of the few men who have left me since. Uh, you know, that it was that formational for her, that that's then what she seeks out in relationship. And I think that's, that's so true. I love the way you said it, too. I agree. I agree. And I think it's so important when it comes to picking a partner that you find out a little bit about how they were parented and the relationship mm-hmm. they have with their mother and father, you know, or if they had a single parent, one or the other. Um, yes, and so I always true. say, if you're too close to, if you're a guy and you're too close to your mother, run. If you're a guy <laughs> and you hate your mother, run. 
There we go. That is a great, great statement. Yes, yes. David, as our boys guru, I think you would totally there agree with that. There is some truth in that, <laughs> indeed. Yes, that's so good. I talked to some couple, and the woman said that her husband <laughs> called his mom every night before he went to bed. And I was like, good Lord, get rid of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so good yes yes well so there's so many things we would love to ask you about one thing thinking about all of the places that you have been all of the conversations that you have had over the years that probably those have been so transformational for you as well is there is there something that's such a hard question for you to pinpoint one thing probably but something that's really left its mark on you that's fresh on your brain or that has been transformational? Gosh, you know, honestly, that is such a hard question. Susan, no, because sure. I've probably done, you know, thousands of interviews, tens of yes. thousands. And there are so many people who have inspired me. You know, mm -hmm. I think that I have interviewed a number of people who have experienced tragedy in their lives. And I think that people who exemplify resilience and people who have been through something unspeakably tough and are yet able to talk about it or able to forgive or able to be motivated to change something. I mean, gosh, honestly, I could come up with a hundred people like that from, you know, Shannon Watts, who started Moms Demand Action. She was a PR person who was so incensed after Sandy Hook. Mm. She started this nationwide movement of mothers, and they've changed laws in many states, and they've That's run amazing. for office. You know, there was a woman I remember I interviewed. Her daughter was killed in South Africa, and she forgave the 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 person who who took her daughter's life. And I mean, just story after story of this, I mean, this incredible human, the the sort of the, the human spirit and how it is able to be resilient and how it's able to adjust to tragedy and to, I don't know, it's, uh, there, I, I wish I, I should keep a list handy and I could send you a whole list of people. But, you know, I, I think I've just I've just met so many extraordinary people and also like political leaders who have inspired me. Hillary Clinton, you know, I know she's controversial. I know everyone doesn't like her. Uh, I think that's a, a podcast in and of itself kind of unpacking why that is, but yes. she is so thoughtful and eloquent and really so smart. I love talking to smart people who, I mean, she is, she can speak so seamlessly on so many topics with, with such intelligence, experience, and authority that I really admire her. And, um, you know, you can, you can say a lot of things if you don't, if you're a Hillary Clinton detractor, but she is smart. And I, I would venture to say she might be a little smarter than her husband. Um, but I mean, they're both obviously highly intelligent Brilliant. people. Um, but, but I, I really enjoy talking to people like that. I remember one of my favorite interviews was, was with Herman Woke who wrote Winds of War. He was yes. probably in his mid nineties when I interviewed him. He was so charming and so charismatic. He had a lot of riz, which is the word of the year, according to Ox the Oxford English Dictionary. Do you know what riz is? No. What it is comes, it? It comes from charisma. Oh, okay. By the riz. way, in the, pan the pan Pantone color, is that what they call Pantone? Color of the year, by the way, is peach fuzz. So I'm just wow. giving you guys some Thank some you. really interesting news, <laughs> breaking news here on your podcast. Yes. <laughs> Peach, fuzz, and riz. I yeah. love that. Oh. I love it. Katie, as we reflect on all the good work you are doing in this world, I want to camp out in one space for a few minutes and talk about how you co-founded 
Stand Up for Cancer, which has raised more than seven hundred million to support eight hundred actually. Oh, that needs incredible. updating. That's <laughs> incredible. That's incredible to support cutting edge collaborative science and its research has contributed to nine new FDA approved therapies. That's incredible. Yeah, that's, I think, one of my proudest accomplishments. You know, of after course. my husband, Jay, died of colon cancer in 1998, and I really focused on raising awareness and research dollars uh, for colon cancer, I, and, and you know, did my colonoscopy on the Today Show because let's face it, I kids, remember. nothing says good morning like getting a colonoscopy <laughs> on national television. Um, but That's after amazing. I really focused on colon cancer and I think I did did raise awareness, I think um, a lot of people got screened as a result of my mm -hmm. efforts. I started thinking there were so many cancers that needed funding. So along with eight other sort of type A women, we started Stand Up to Cancer because we wanted to change the paradigm of cancer research and get these scientists and researchers from all over the country and even the world to start working together because so much of it, the research is done in silos and is, you know, there are redundancies and competition. And we thought if two heads are better than one, 10 heads are better than two. And we could move science forward faster if scientists would collaborate. And it's been such an important part of my life and my journey. And I'm so grateful for all the scientists who work so hard and get very little attention or credit for what they do. And it's been incredibly gratifying to be a part of this organization and uh, that that is has really accomplished an, a lot. And uh, Sherry Lansing, I mean, I I am in New York. Most of the folks are in L.A. raising money constantly and working with the scientists. So I'm hopefully an important part of the organization, but just a small part. Mm. La, 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 la. David, I hate to interrupt your concert, but can I ask what you're doing? Pretending to be a chef. I'm making rigatoni. What inspired all of this? Our place, one of our new sponsors. I love our place. I am cooking the Always Pan 2.0. I love the color. It's sage. I have it in char. What have you made? A better question is, what have I not made? I even have the Wonder Oven. We made pizzas in it at the lake. I wonder if you'd bring me one of those pizzas. Did you catch that dad joke? <laughs> I did, and maybe I will. David, did you know that most cookware and appliances are made with forever chemicals? I'm officially swapping out toxic kitchenware and appliances for Our Place's non-toxic, healthy, sustainable choices. Our Place is healthy and PFAS-free versus the industry. Our Place is a mission-driven and female-founded brand that makes beautiful kitchen products that are healthy and sustainable. Connie leaves them out on the stove all the time like decorations. So do I. Most cookware brands continue to use these chemicals due to their low cost. Leading the change, Our Place has always been PFAS-free and offers the most durable, toxin-free ceramic coatings, ensuring a healthy, safe cooking experience. In addition to cookware, PFAS are also frequently used in appliances, especially air fryers, pressure cookers, crock pots, and even the rim of blenders. That's why Our Place came out with non-toxic appliances that are changing the game. And did we mention they're beautifully designed in beautiful colors that feel like art objects, that elevate any home, and that make you feel creative in the kitchen? Find out why Our Place has 75,000 five-star reviews on their award-winning products, and they've been mentioned in the New York Times, Bon Appetit, and more. That's why you see Our Place in everyone's kitchen from Selena Gomez to David Beckham and David Thomas. Upgrade to Our Place today and say goodbye to forever chemicals in your kitchen. Go to fromourplace.com and enter our code RBG at checkout to receive 10% off site-wide. That's from ourplace.com code RBG. Our Place offers a 100-day trial with free shipping and returns. 
sissy, I need to file a complaint with management. Oh no, what happened? My young adult children were home this weekend for Easter. They brought friends, fraternity brothers. We were basically running a boarding house and when they left, all the element was gone. I had a new stash and there is not a packet left in my house. Well, I'm sorry for you, but I can't blame them for taking that great stuff. It disappears from my house all the time. Everyone I know loves Element. I'm about to order more. I love Element. I have the sample pack in my bag ready to take on our trip to Mississippi this weekend. What flavors are you loving? I love watermelon salt. Did you know Element has a free gift with purchase offer? You can claim a free Element sample pack when you make any purchase through our link. It includes one packet of every flavor. This is the perfect offer for anyone who's interested in trying all of the flavors or wants to introduce a friend to Element. And they offer a no questions asked refund on all orders. You don't even have to send it back. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. None of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low carb, or paleo diet. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness. I've had all those in the past week. <laughs> and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. David, that's because when you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. Athletes can lose up to seven grams per day. When sodium is not replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue. Thank you for assuming that I'm sweating like an athlete, <laughs> when the truth is that I'm just hot all the time. Element is used by everyone from podcast hosts to NBA, NFL, and NHL players, Olympic athletes to everyday moms and dads and exercise enthusiasts. Right now, Element is offering a free sample pack with any purchase. The Element sample pack includes one packet of every flavor, this is the perfect offer for anyone interested in trying all the flavors or who wants to introduce a friend to Element. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash rbg. This deal is only available through our link. Go to drinklmnt.com slash rbg. Element offers no questions asked refunds. Try it totally risk-free. If you don't like it, Share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You have nothing to lose. You have made such a difference in so many places. We could talk about all the things. Katie, we'd have, we need to have hours. But you're also a New York Times bestselling author, having written a memoir called Going There, as well as the best advice I've ever got. And two children's books, The Brand New Kid and The Blue Ribbon Day. We love what these books are about. Can you talk a little bit about them and what you hope readers gain from them? Sure. Well, the children's books were the first things I wrote. You know, I had my two little girls yes. who are now grown-up girls. And, uh, you know, I started thinking about how could I help spread the importance of kindness and the first book, The Brand New Kid, was based on a young man who went to my junior high named Laszlo Steven Dosha. I think he was Romanian. I think he might have been differently abled, as they say, and might have had some, some learning disabilities. I'm not sure. He was very fair skinned and had very red lips and blonde, kind of a blonde crew cut. And he'd always follow me around and go, Kirk. And, <laughs> and, you know, he was just different than the other kids. And I remember seeing his mom come to school and looking very sad. And I just remember thinking, you know, it's really hard. Kids, kids can be hard. Kids can be mean. They don't want to be different. They're not always nice to the kids who are different. Right. And I just really wanted to teach kids the importance of kindness and reaching out and being empathetic. And, you know, I think it's because I'm very oriented that way. You know, I'm the person who sees someone at a party, if they're by themselves or not talking to someone, I'll automatically go up to them and start talking to them. Or 
I don't know. I'm just very, very aware of external dynamics somehow. I don't know how I got that way. I think I've always just had a great deal of empathy. My mom used to say I'm tender hearted. And I uh, I think I just wanted to to encourage kids to reach out to the kid in the school who is eating alone at the lunch table or seems sad or doesn't have as many friends. And, you know, so that's why I wrote the first book. And then the second book was this, you know, there was this idea that everybody gets a trophy and that, you know, everybody's good at everything that was sort of the prevailing philosophy when I was raising my kids, you know, that we had to make sure everybody had, you know, strong self-esteem and everyone felt like a winner and, and all that. And I think that I realized that that just everybody isn't good at everything. And the more we learn that sometimes we're going to be disappointed or sometimes we're not going to be the best in the class at tennis or we're not going to be the best singer and get the role in the school play or we're not going to, you know, and that life is full of these, you know, a series of disappointments and setbacks. And so I wrote The Blue Ribbon Day because one of the girls, the protagonist, I th- can't remember whether it's Ellie or Carrie, doesn't make the soccer team and is really disappointed. And then she ends up doing really well in the science fair. And it was sort of like, you know, everybody's good at something. You're going to find what you're good at, but it's okay not to be good at things. So that's why I wrote the second book. And then the best advice I ever got, I um, really wanted to raise money for this organization called Scholarship America that gives a lot of money to needy kids who can't afford to go to college. It was started by an optometrist in Fall River, Massachusetts. And um, this darling man who just died a couple of years ago, And he started this program called Dollars for Scholars and asking everybody in the town to give a dollar. It's like, sounds like straight out of It's a Wonderful Life, doesn't it? It does, yes. And they raised money and they were able to send all the kids in the town to college. And it ultimately became this huge, massive scholarship fund. And I heard about it and I thought, I want to help. And I, I know all these huge, like, big names because of what I do for a living. And wouldn't it be fun to get them to all write like an interesting piece of advice that might be helpful to somebody? So I reached out to a bunch of different people and they all contributed. I had to kind of revamp some of it because it includes Bill Cosby and Donald Trump Mm because I wrote it back (laughs) in the day. And I'm like, eh, we we got to maybe do uh, publish a new edition and uh, and have some omissions but um but anyway so i did that and that was really fun and then last but not least i wrote my memoir which was a really important experience for me and i um it was you know took me 3 years and i really wrote it cuz i I never really had told my own story. You know, when you're a public figure, a lot of people tell stories about you that honestly often are wrong or are oh. are tainted by their own biases or whatever. And I just wanted to write my story from my perspective. And I really also did it as a gift to my daughters. You know, I was the kind of mom who like every year I'm going to write each of them a letter about what happened that year and what they did and what they achieved and some of the things that we learned. And of course I never did. So instead Mm. I wrote this book. Mm. I love that. What a gift to them and to the world. Yes. Well, within your story, Katie, you were the first female to solo anchor a network evening newscast after co-anchoring the Today Show for 15 years. And as therapists who work with kids, we talk so much about worry and anxiety and the importance of kids doing hard things. Mm. That had to be hard. And so what was it like for you and what would you say gave you the courage to do it? Stupidity gave me the courage to do it. (laughs) Ignorance, uh, not doing my due diligence. No, listen, I thought it would be, you know, it's interesting because I think 
there's a balance. You know, we always encourage kids to take risks and try new things. But I think you do have to do it mindfully and thoughtfully. And you have to do your homework and and really try to make the best decision you can. I think that I, after 15 years, I was ready for a new challenge, which is understandable. 15 years is a long time and it didn't have anything to do with getting up early. It just like I was ready to do something different. And they came to me and they wanted to revamp how the news was done and make it a little less pretentious and portentous and kind of formal and voice of God like. And, um, you know, and it was it was a big opportunity as a woman to help viewers see that a woman could handle that job with competence and confidence. And it's sort of crazy that we didn't have that before. But I think, you know, when you're the first person to break a barrier, you get a lot of scrutiny and a lot of criticism. And I also think there's something primal in us that love to cheer people when they're on their way up. But Also, the tall poppy syndrome, which is what they call it in Australia, they like to cut you down if you achieve too much or if they sense that you've gotten too big for your britches, as my mom would say. So I think it was a really hard experience that really tested me. Mm -hmm. And I write a lot about that in my book. Um, You know, I had a lot of external criticism from people I had a lot of internal criticism because CBS is a very traditional network. And as they say, they just, a lot of people there were just not picking up what I was putting down. (laughs) And, and, uh, you know, and I was, you know, I was just a little bit cut from a different cloth. I was, you know, a little less formal a person and, I'm a very serious person, ironically, despite the fact that I'm outgoing and I don't want to say the word perky because I hate that word and I find it demeaning and sexist. But I think I am outgoing. Riz. We and, could say riz. You got a lot friendly. of riz. I, I got some riz going. <laughs> <laughs> I got the riz. Um, but but um, it really tested me. I'll never forget, I was having dinner with my girls and I think Carrie was 10 and Ellie was 14 or something. And I was, I suddenly burst into tears at the dinner Mm -hmm. table and they were a little alarmed and they looked at me and they were like, mom, what's wrong? And I said, I'm just having the worst time at work. It's so hard. You know, and people were trashing me in the newspaper and Mm -hmm. oh God, it was like a snake pit. Every time I walked through (laughs) those doors, I was like, Uh. you know, it had like I was triggered. But anyway, um, Carrie, who, as I said, was just this little girl with this cute little voice said, Mom, remember what Samantha said in Sex in the City? <laughs> and I was like, oh, good Lord. First of all, there's so much wrong with this. She goes, Samantha said, if I listened to what every bitch in New York City said about me, I'd never leave the house. <laughs> and I said, wow, Carrie. And I started laughing because... <laughs> I thought it was so funny. And of course, I had real doubts about my parenting skills that I was letting my child watch Sex in the City and God knows what she was watching. But anyway, it was it was hard. So I think I guess the bottom line is I think we should definitely encourage kids to take risks. I think Mm. a lot of them don't these days because they're so afraid of failure. Yes. And I think failure and disappointment, as I said earlier, it's just, they are such important life lessons and the ability to pick yourself up and to keep going and to experience setbacks and to learn from them and to pursue. I mean, nobody glides through life, very few people without a lot of heartache and things happening to them that they wish hadn't. So I think, I think we need to not only cr- encourage kids to take risks, but to tell them it's okay not to be perfect. Mm. And I think this, this obviously you all is, as people who are with kids all the time know that this kind of desire to, to not fail is so paralyzing for kids. And it, it, it prevents them from trying new things and, and from learning these valuable life lessons. Yes. 
That's contributing so much to the prevalence of anxiety in our culture. Yes. You know, there's a really good uh, book, and I think um, my friend wrote it, <laughs> and it's called Never Enough. And it's about the incredible pressure on kids to mm. succeed and how it's really, really um, impacting their mental health in a negative way. And it's really based on, ex you know, deep reporting Wow. and very thorough research. And she does say it's it's mostly a problem of more affluent families. Exactly. But yes. just because it's a problem that afflicts kids of privilege or a certain amount of privilege, it doesn't mean it's not a problem that yes. we should just ignore it. And it's just a very well-written well-researched book. And I think, I think your listeners would really benefit from a having, hearing that conversation and reading her book. Thanks to KiwiCo, one of our favorite sponsors, we are taking the exploration of space to a whole new level. I just ordered Henry the Solar Lantern and wet the Sensory Solar System set. It's like NASA at your house. Patches may need to be an astronaut for Halloween. <laughs> how much do we love KiwiCo? I cannot describe how much I love KiwiCo. KiwiCo delivers seriously fun learning for kids of all ages through hands-on projects and activities. Give them the tools to learn new skills, build new experiences, and make new connections to the broader world. From discovering the science of magic to engineering a domino machine and more. Each crate is designed by real experts and tested by kids to ensure that every experience is age-appropriate, engaging, and seriously fun. Crates come with everything needed for kids to build, including materials and instructions. You'll be surprised at how high quality the materials are too. It can be hard to find creative ways to keep your children engaged, challenged, and off their screens. They'll explore new worlds and rediscover familiar ones without leaving home. There's no commitment, so you can pause or cancel anytime. Cultivate your child's natural curiosity while encouraging them to be an innovator and creative thinker. The best part? Watching their creative confidence grow as they tackle different challenges. The moment of pride and accomplishment at the end of a KiwiCo project sparks creative confidence for ongoing tinkering and experimentation. Redefine learning with play. Explore projects that build confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month on any crate line at KiwiCo.com with promo code RBG. That's 50% off your first month at KiwiCo.com, promo code RBG. We talk so much about exactly what we're saying about failure, but also average, how important average and ordinary are too for kids in their growing up and what that builds in terms of resilience and and also this this crazy arms race to get into certain colleges. Oh. You know, Frank Bruni wrote a great book called Where You Go Is and Who You'll Be. Mm. And it's basically talking about how people like Howard Schultz and Bobby Brown and a whole slew of really successful people went to colleges that were not considered, you know, uber elite and most CEOs go to state schools. And, oh. you know, there are a lot of mediocre kids who graduate from the Ivies. So I think that people need a reality check and parents need to realize, like, you know, you can't be pushing your kids because you want to put that sticker on the back of your, you know, Audi SUV. <laughs> yes. Great reminder. Well, so picturing you all around the dinner table is such a, a picture and of where you were in life in the midst of trying to balance all these things as a working mom. And knowing that we have a lot of listeners who are in that space in life, not that they're news anchors and working moms, but a lot of different right. places where they're giving. And what encouragement would you give to those moms? Well, first of all, you know, I think they need to find partners who 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 really uh, contribute <laughs> to the, you know, what what's happening at home. I read a statistic, I think it was from Melinda Gates book that women spend seven more years doing domestic chores and taking care of their families than men do, you know, wow. and 
I think that they need to make sure that their partner is putting in in the work. I think that they need to be kind to themselves and get rid of the guilt. You know, like I never felt guilty about working. I loved my job. I still love what I do. And I think I wanted my girls to see that I was out there. I was financially independent. I was doing something that I think was important and is important. And, you know, I think that in my generation of parents, there were all these helicopter parents who are now called snowplow parents who kind of clear the way and solve all these problems for their kids. And I think not having me around 24 seven probably was really healthy for my kids. The other thing I would say is really value and pay and compensate people who help you care for your children. Mm -hmm. There is no job more important. And I don't get people who want to buy a fancy car or fancy jewelry or spend a lot of money on handbags. I've never been a handbag person. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I get it. If you like handbags, that's cool, whatever. But (laughs) but and then and then they they they're cheap with their with their employees. I just don't get that. It's like value them, respect them for what they do. As I said, there's no job more important than the people who help you take care of your children. Mm -hmm. So treat them as the professionals they are and compensate them fairly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I had a great nanny who was like my wife and uh, (laughs) Lori Beth, you know, after Jay died, you know, as a single mom Mm -hmm. and Lori Beth, I, I could never have done any of it. And I, I, I give her so much credit for, for the people my daughters turned out to be. She was such an important part of their childhoods. And she was more of the bad cop. And I was kind of like the dad who came home and let them do anything. <laughs> and Lori Beth had to crack down on my kids. And I'm just so grateful for her, um, you know, and, and I hope people feel that way about the the people who are taking care of their children. Yeah. Mm. Katie, what is some of the best parenting advice you've ever been given? I mean, my mom used to say, they'll kill you if you let them about kids, (laughs) (laughs) which I always thought was funny. And I think what she meant was, you know, you have to have boundaries, even with your kids sometimes, you know, uh, for your health and for their well-being, right? So I always thought about that. And, and my mom always said, less is more, you know, when sometimes you're trying to explain complicated things to kids, like death or, you know, all sorts of issues. She said, sometimes children are satisfied with less and you have to follow their lead and answer their questions. But I thought that was good. I mean, I think she meant be really intuitive about you know, how to, how to help kids and how to explain certain things. Um, Other advice I've gotten is, and I haven't necessarily practiced it, but, you know, you can't fix everything for your kids. And I tend to try to do that because I'm a fixer. Like if something's wrong, I want to come up with a solution. And it's hard to sit with somebody who's upset or disappointed Someone and sometimes who you adore they, that's upset. And yeah, disappointed. they just have to figure it out themselves and right. they have to develop those coping skills. So I think that's that's really, really important when I think we've touched on it earlier. When it comes to raising kids, you have to, you know, what is that book about the value of a skin knee or something? Yes. The blessing that's, of a skin knee. The blessing knee. Yeah. of a skin knee. Such a great yeah. book. Yeah. Well, we hate to even be coming to the end of this conversation, but for anybody who might be living under a rock somewhere and isn't as aware of what you're doing these days and all the places that you're still giving such good, helpful information, will you talk a little bit about what you're doing now and any new projects you're working on? Oh, that that's can, so nice. That Thank you, find? Sissy, for, yes. for letting me do that. Yes, because a lot of people are like, you know, have you retired? What happened to you? And I'm like, Bro, you got to look no, online. <laughs> exactly. We we started a media company about six years ago because I realized the way people were consuming information had changed dramatically. You know, I think when I was doing the Today Show, the iPhone hadn't even been, been invented. So 
people were still turning on their television sets to find out what was happening in the world. And the Today Show still does a great job. A lot of people still watch morning television, but a lot of people get their news and information from the rectangle in their hand, the screen. Right. And um, so I started with my husband, Katie Couric Media. I didn't want to name it that, but they all said that I should because I guess, you know, I had some some name recognition and I we do a, a newsletter uh, six days a week called Wake Up Call. We have a website with all kinds of interesting content. I do a podcast called Next Question with really interesting guests. And um, and then we work with companies that care about issues, you know, has as trust in media and institutions has declined, a lot of companies are stepping up to say, we want to address climate change. We want to address income inequality. We want to address issues about social justice or gender equality and all kinds of things. And so we do storytelling with some of these partners, which has been really fun too. Like I, we work with Humana and we did a series about the senior Olympics and what the, the, you know, by the way, senior Olympics, I think you're eligible when you're something like 52. So <laughs> hi, <laughs> senior Olympics. But, um, you We're know, what they've you. meant for people as they age and the sense of community and, you know, that touches on issues of loneliness and social isolation that are mm. so pervasive in our society writ large, not just for people who are older and, um, you know, we do a lot of health and wellness and cancer stories and things that will hopefully help people stay healthy as long as they can. And and we're starting a newsletter that focuses on the environment. We're starting a newsletter that focuses on food. We're doing one mm-hmm. on health and wellness. So we're really expanding and we're trying to create a community and an ecosystem of people who care about what's going on in the world and who are really want factual information in an era where there's so much disinformation. And, um, you know, it's been really fun. So I've become kind of an entrepreneur and a job creator, which is also really gratifying. Yes. Mm. Well, so where do people go to find all that? Well, what's it's the really website? tricky. KatieCurric.com. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Well, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for what you do, because I think it's a, you know, it's a hard time to raise children. The world feels so uncertain. There are so many different things and pressures with social media and the pressure to excel and achieve and you know, it's it's a confusing time. I'm I'm glad I grew up in the 60s and 70s, to be honest with you. And sometimes yes. even my daughter Ellie says, Mom, I wish I grew up when you did, when life yes. felt a lot less complicated. And yes. and so I I think what you all do in terms of providing support for kids is so critically important. So I just wanted to say thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Katie. You're so kind. Thank you. Well, we like to end every conversation with something fun and food related. So we've got a two part question for you. Okay. Part one is queso or guac. Part two is what's your favorite taco? Okay. Guac. Although I like queso too, (laughs) but I would say guac over queso. And my favorite taco, I mean, I like them all, to be honest with you, but I'm kind of into fish tacos right now Yes, with a little like sriracha and mayo mixed together and mm. maybe some fresh cabbage. And I don't know. I don't know. But I, I pretty much there's not a food group that I don't like. So <laughs> I don't know. I, yes. I, I, I love I love almost everything, unfortunately. And I've been overindulging because tis the season. So mm. I'm I'm trying to take it easy and uh, I'm trying to get off sugar and flour a little bit. But that's what ha- that's how I start every day. And unfortunately, that's not how I end every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's Katie, good. you are a delight. I know. It's been so enjoyable. We can't thank you enough for giving oh my us gosh. this time. Well, I'm so happy to, to spend some time with both of you. 
so grateful that you're who you are in this world and that Aww. we got to spend a little time with you today. Thank you. Thanks, Sissy. And thank you, David. So nice to meet you. You too. David, what a team we have that we get to call friends who help make this podcast possible. Amanda Young, our operations manager. Chris Starrett, our engineer and producer. Our management team at KCH. And we are thrilled to be a part of the That Sounds Fun Network. Our music was created by the insanely talented Dave Haywood of Lady A. And if this podcast felt helpful to you, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all the things. We are grateful for you and cheering you on always.